YouTubers, I want to welcome you to another edition of Bargain Bin Gear. And in this episode, we're going to go back to, oh, about 2001, maybe, 2002. And my fourth album, I'm not sure exactly when it was, but it was called An Evening with Dennis Tate. So anyway, it was called An Evening with Guitarist Dennis Tate, I think. Something like that. Volume 4. And it was actually a live recording at a little coffee house. And I mean, I played that place several times. And had a bare minimum setup. I mean, you gotta remember, this is a coffee house. I mean, people are drinking coffee, and they're like, man, maybe three or four feet from you. You know, it's not exactly like you can bring huge amps and blast it out. In fact, uh, I once brought my entire rig, which was huge. I mean, it had um, two eight-space racks and all this stuff. And it was so freaking loud, they made me play outside, and people would listen from inside. So, not to repeat that, right, I, I looked around for some really tiny amps. I mean, the kind of thing where you can show up, you know, carry your amps in little tiny amps and be ready to go. And, well... At the time, what I found were these little orange amps, and I mean, they were small. In fact, I'll show it to you. Let's take a look at it right over here. So these little guys right here, they have built-in effects, and they're really small. And, and for solid-state amps, I mean, they're not too shabby, right? Um, however, um, compared to a tube amp, which is much more dynamic, like when you pull a chord, you know, you're playing and you pull a chord instead of strumming a chord, if you like, um, well, the tube amp is so much superior, whereas the, the solid state amp is kind of a flat sound, if you like. It's not very dynamic. Whereas a tube amp would be great. So, with that being said, I thought, man, wouldn't it be sweet to get a little tiny tube amp? Right? And actually get that dynamic going. And the, the warm sound and the feel that you get with tube amps. Right? And so I went looking around and found some little tube amps that I would really like to own until um, I got to the price. Uh, for example, the Supro 64. I really like Supro amps. However, this little tiny amp was somewhere in the neighborhood of $900, almost $1,000, as I recall. Right, no, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about for a small coffee house gigs, if you like. You know, or I could just bring in a plethora X5, and that'd be my only effects. Right, and still in stereo and so on but with tube amps instead of solid state amps. So, kept looking around and uh, then I found the Black Star one watt tube amp and I was thinking, man, I don't know, one watt, awfully small, but maybe this is what I need. But then I looked at the price and again, I mean, we're talking 500 bucks one, you know. In any case, it was kind of expensive, from what I recall. And, um, 
Here's the other thing. When you're looking for a little tube amp, small tube amp, right, they, they seem to always cut corners, like no built-in reverb, you know, that kind of stuff. And I was like, man, I don't know about this. This is maybe a bad idea. And then I ran across uh, a Bugera V5 Infinium. Now, as you recall, hopefully you're subscribing so that you're following these videos. I had just gotten a Bugera V22 and was very, very pleased with it. I thought the sound was really great. Especially for the price. Well, the V5 Infinium is a little tiny tube amp. It has an 8 inch speaker. However, it does have built in reverb and an attenuator, which is kind of silly, but from 5 watt down to 1 watt down to 0.1 watt. <laughs> okay. And I just have to believe that it will be similar to the V22, but just in a smaller package. You know, back from what I recall, it has half the tubes that the V22 has, but still very similar. Um, just like the V22 has a tube health check thing, self-biasing, right? I think it only has two tubes, one power tube and one preamp tube. Very simple, single channel design, right? I mean, I think it has a gain setting, a master volume, a reverb, and a tone control, and I think that's it. And a power toggle switch, if you like. Uh, but it looks great. It looks just like the V22, but in a smaller form factor. And the best part of all is the price. I mean, I believe that new, these are going for about $279. There's a bunch of used ones floating around. But I'd be very careful with those. Um, you don't know how old they are what the tubes are like and those kinds of things. You know, um, for such a cheap amp, you know, um, coming off the assembly line in China, I guess you never know what you're really going to get. Um, so I ran into that. Um, but then I found, just like the V22 I had just got, from Sweetwater, right, with easy pay and these kinds of things, and the two-year warranty. Well, turns out they had a couple of V5 demo units, you know, I mean, the, basically pr pretty much new, but had been opened, I guess, you know, is the idea. So they were a little less expensive. And um, had the same easy pay and things, same two-year warranty, and so on. So I went all in and, and I went ahead and ordered one. Uh, in fact, I ordered two. Right? And we'll see what happens once they come in. They should arrive pretty soon. Okay? Now. 8 inch speaker is not all that desirable, of course, you'd want a 10 or a 12 inch speaker would be better. However, with that said, you know, we're talking about the size difference in the, in the amp, you know, a little tiny amp like that would be perfect for those coffee house mm -hmm. gigs, you know, as well as late night playing and for recording as well. So I'm really excited to see what happens. Now, here's the thing. 
and I think I should do a probably a separate video on this with a disclaimer mentioning this is very important for Bulgaria owners right and that is if you buy a Bulgaria amplifier from Bulgaria it comes with a one-year warranty right however if you take the time to go to their website and register right and register your amp they'll give you a three-year warranty Right? That's not bad when you consider Sweetwater already giving you a two-year warranty. But let's say three years down the road, the amp breaks down or starts to crackle or what have you. Right? Those are common problems with them, supposedly. Right? Well, you still have that one extra year warranty if you register the amplifier so that's one thing it's kind of a pain in the butt you know but it's well worth it you know especially three years down the road you know and you encounter a problem you still have some recourse to at least get it repaired hopefully okay so that's something to keep in mind um all right Here's the other thing, and this is just from what I've researched online. They say the tubes that come with them aren't the greatest. Okay. Um, I prefer uh, JJ tubes very much. I like them. Um, and a replacement set of power tube and preamp tube, about 39 bucks. Right. I mean, I just saw that online. I mean, it was through Amazon. You can get tubes or tu tube depots, another one. Um, for about 39 bucks, so that's not too bad. But here's the thing. And I've done this with a Supro amp, and it worked out great. And that is swapping out the preamp tube, right? Because I find that... Um, to get that clean headroom, which is what I'm looking for, right? Kind of that fender chimey thing. Uh, would be to replace the 12 a AX7 tube, right? The ECC 83 tube, right? Depending on what part of the world you're in. Um, That's a 100% gain tube. You could get an AT7, right, 12AT7, or even a 12AY7, or even a 12AU7, right? And all those are keep lowering the gain, right? So it's not gonna overdrive as much and you can get a cleaner headroom. Right? And that's what I want. I want a clean amp uh, with little to no overdrive whatsoever. You know, basically, and we use it kind of as a pedal platform. Right? So that'd be something to consider is changing out the tubes. For right now, though, I'm just going to try it stock when it arrives and see where, where we're at. You know, it may be fine just the way it is. Just depends. The other thing is they mentioned the turbo sound speaker swapping out with a Celestian speaker or some other kind of 8-inch speaker. I don't know if that would make a big difference or not. I will say this, though. I saw a video of a guy, unfortunately, who... Uh, um, changed out his speaker and then AB'd them and pfft, you know he says he can hear a difference in the room but on the video you know, there was no difference really so 
I don't know, that may come down the line, who knows. Uh, I want to try them stock first and see what happens. And, and this is something I've wanted for a long time was really small tube amps, you know. The kind that I can take to a little copy house game. The other thing is, don't forget the little Bugera V5 is 5 watts as opposed to the 1 watt, you know. In that size, anyway. You know, now Blackstar does have a 5 watt amp, but it's a much bigger amp. Or they have a little 1 watt, which is tiny. You know, I don't know about that. I, I suppose if I could try one. But the other thing is that, you know, it's expensive. Even these little Bougueras I found, you know, are pretty pricey. Small tube amps, for some reason, are quite expensive. I mean, I think the V5 Infinium Bougera amp is about 279 new. So, I mean, that's not too bad, considering, you know, a little tiny tube amp. Yeah, that is pretty cool. Uh, so, we'll see how it stacks up uh, against the little orange amps and things, you know, and see if they require a tube change, you know, to get that clean headroom and, and less overdrive, you know. Um, so, now, there were a bunch of uh, used ones available, but quite frankly, the price was pretty close to the new one, so, you know, and carried a 30-day warranty, which is you know, compare that to at least a two-year warranty from Sweetwater and then the three-year warranty from Bruguera. You know, basically, it gives you an extra year through Bruguera. You know, but don't expect any quick turnarounds. Where Sweetwater would be much faster turnaround usually. If you run into a problem. Here's the other thing. Let us not be fooled. Just like the V22, there are two different versions of the V5 Infinium. All right? The first version is called the Vintage Infinium. And basically has, same as the V22, this red speaker and usually a blue light, though not always, some are still orange, right? Um, but they don't have any of the tube health checking or anything like that. Obviously the speaker is different on the new ones. You get the tube health checker on the back and the turbo sound speaker. And obviously the tubes would be newer if you like um, and then I found a little Bougera V5 that was really affordable until I started reading about it and man it's all beat up and not only that it doesn't even have a power light you know and then I started reading about that and it turns out some of these Bougueras uh the power light starts flashing, right? And the amp takes a long time to turn on and so on. So, I just wonder if someone didn't pull the light to hide that fact, you know, that there is a problem with the amp. So, I just didn't want to mess with that, you know. And through the power of easy pay, I went with the Sweetwater demo units here with a two-year warranty. Plus the one-year extra from Bougera, you know. 
Uh, it's just a pretty safe bet there. If there's a problem with it, I can send it back. You know. Um, I, I do think the the tube change might be a great idea. You know. Um, yeah, they said that the, the tubes in the Bugera V5 aren't that great. I don't know, it depends. I mean, the V22, whatever tubes are in there are working great. I mean, I just don't hear a big difference. However, I do like JJ tubes, you know, and they're not too expensive. You know, thank goodness it's not like a deluxe reaver where it's like $200 you know, for new tubes, for a set of new tubes. It's more, it's kind of like the Fender X2, it's about $40. Uh, that's more like it. All right, so we'll see uh, what happens there. And quite frankly, other than the Black Star, I didn't really find um, too many other little small tube amps you know, that were reasonably priced, I mean, around the under $300, let's say, right? Or just, there's not much there. And the Bugera, you know, yeah, I really like the V22, and that's why I bought the V5s. So, this is part one. Part two will be course the unboxing of the V5s when they arrive and checking out how they sound just stock you know without changing anything just plugging them in and we'll see how it goes now here's the thing they're small but man they weigh to 22 pounds are you kidding me I mean that's for a little 5 watt amplifier wow you know, and that's the thing, those little Bugueras, at least the Infinium series, are kind of heavy. You know, even the V22. But, you know, 22 pounds isn't exactly going to, you know, make it too hard to move or anything. Like that. Another update. I've been getting Studio A ready. And I mean, I had two bins in there full of cables, pedals, power supplies, all kinds of stuff. And I mean, I spent a long time in there, um, you know, using twist ties and getting those cables. You know, there was basically spaghetti of cables. And I actually found a lot of great cables I can reuse, you know. Um, and some of them are really nice. Yeah, so I'm kind of excited about finishing that project up. Uh, another project is uh, I'll be doing soon is, as you'll recall, we had, um, I did this little mini pedal board for my nine pedals. Well, I have a, um, a Beat Buddy drum machine. Isn't that the dumbest name you could ever imagine? I bet you people don't buy that pedal because of the name Beat Buddy. Please. Right? I mean, it's embarrassing, really. Why couldn't they have called it something cool, you know? Something you're proud to own instead of a Beat Buddy. You know, and in fact, Quite frankly, I would say the exact same thing about the Blues Junior, right? Junior? Man, you don't want to buy an amp that's a junior. What are you talking about? You know, I'm, it's just me. That's why I would tell Fender is drop the junior part, right? Nobody wants to buy a junior anything. But yeah, the Beat Buddy. Anyway, it's a drum machine. And it's a great, because it's really cool. It's in a pedal. 
right? And with it, you can hook up pedals, right? To uh, use the menu with your feet, but also hit um, fills and things with your foot. So I'm gonna make another little mini pedal board with uh, the, the Beat Buddy. I just can't stand that name though. There's just something wrong with that. Wow, what a doofus. Whoever thought up that name. Jeez. Beat Buddy. Anyway, I call it something else. I'm just saying. Um, so yeah, that's something I've been wanting to do and just haven't had time to mess with it. On top of that, I found all my old rack systems are still in Studio A, and I'll show you those. Some of them are actually pretty cool. A lot of lexicon processors and things, you know, and some of them sound really interesting, really neat sounding you know so organizing that you know is working out too all right so uh, I guess the next step is to get those little Bugera V5 Infiniums in and see what it's like especially in stereo how it takes pedals whether it's clean enough, you know, uh, whether it requires a tube change. Maybe those tubes are terrible, I don't know. We'll see, though. All right, very good. See you next time. Okay, bye.